Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. This was Kiko 3 months ago when she was diagnosed with puppy hip dysplasia, limping while walk with atrophied hind leg muscles. And this is present day Kiko 3 months later. So today's video is all about that transition from a limping puppy who would often sit down unable to walk any further. At times we would carry her back home to this strong, happy, energetic puppy who would run and jump effortlessly. So the video is all about that one most deciding factor, grooming among others. I don't know much about canine physiology or anatomy, but I have studied human body, human physiology and anatomy. So my knowledge of naturopathy came in really handy in understanding her conditions and to give her a systematic grooming process. I felt like sharing this because if this routine helps my baby to regain her strength and vigor, then definitely this will help your pet too. This routine is a general grooming process which can be beneficial for any dog. We will not discuss about the prerequisites here as is already mentioned in the video. In this grooming process, we go through four distinctive steps. Number one, bath and drying. Number two, massage and its different techniques. Number three, exercise and acupressure. Number four, brushing. One tiny note, if you try to groom your pet at home, this self-clean brush is very really helpful as brushing improves blood circulation of the skin as well as the hair follicles. It's also very easy to remove the loose hair. If you are going to groom your dog instantly after taking a bath, it's really important that the coat is completely dry before you practice the grooming steps on her. My baby's coat is not completely dry yet, so I let her something to munch on because you cannot expect the best of behavior from a hungry dog. By the time she is done with her munching, her coat will be ready for massage. We always avoid the blow dryer. We let her coat dry naturally considering her sensitive ears. Rather we go to play in the sun till her coat is quite dry. In today's video, we have taken into consideration of the different techniques of massage and exercise and how to do it. Technique number one, a flourage, which is a long and slow rhythmic hand movements to one direction which allows light to moderate pressure. Number two is battery massage, which is kneading. Massage techniques also demonstrated here, like vibration by using palm or surface and deportment manipulations by using only fingertips. But when we apply every technique sequentially in the correct order, the impact of massage goes deeper and deeper into the tissue level, giving the patient more health benefits. Before doing a systematic massage therapy, there are a few must-take precautions and must-do points which we need to consider. For example, while doing a spinal massage, keep at least three fingers gap between your fingertips away from the vertebral column and to never put direct and heavy pressure over the spine, which may give in to many complications of the spine. And now, if you must do points, massage of the paw pads. I don't know if you have ever had a foot or hand massage, but it's wonderful. It's an area where we have a lot of nerve endings and for dogs particularly, both their hands and feet on the ground all the time and they rarely get overused and neglected. So you spend little extra time to make sure the paw pads get very good massage. Inspecting the bottom of your dog's pads regularly is a very good exercise just to find if there is any sore area or extra long hair or a thorn because long hair on paw pads makes them slip easily and fall. So this area needs to be properly taken care of. Another area to consider is the face. Because dogs are normally extensively use their jaw and cheek muscles all day long to bark or chew or turn things apart while they play. So a good face massage is crucial to relax your dog. And not to forget to massage the dog's ears and the tail. So guys, I'm overly hopeful that if this routine helps my baby to regain her strength and vigor, then definitely this will help your pet too. In here, I'm uploading almost the raw footage in the hope that even if a single pet is benefited from my efforts, I'll get my rewards. Please revert back to the video and leave a comment for me if this video was helpful. 
In my upcoming videos, we will discuss and demonstrate the therapies we can practice on dogs with arthritis, hip dysplasia, trigger points and specially specific routine for elderly and fragile dogs. So stay tuned and let's get started.